our food choices are really poor. In fact, they're terrible. They're fueling climate change and they're also making us unhealthy. Now that's the bad news. The good news is we can actually do something about it. So in the UK, actually 60% of adults are now classified as being obese or overweight. In fact, the NHS recorded a 23% increase in hospital admissions where the key factor was people being overweight or obese. That's bad news. That contrasts with other people in the, around the globe who are short of water and short of food. And two billion people around the world live with water scarcity. 500 million people are undernourished. And to make these bad food choices, we've actually created a farming industry now that is starting to have a devastating impact on the environment, on our planet. Over three quarters of the world land surface has now been impacted by human activity, leaving little room for wildlife or even ecosystem services. The farmland itself um, is generating a quarter of the greenhouse gases uh, that we produce as humans, um, making it very hard to hit our targets of net zero emissions. Half of that greenhouse gas emissions is down to the animals that we consume as humans. And half of all the crops grown in this country are grown to feed those animals. So listening to that, you might think the answer is for all of us to become vegans. Well, I don't think it's as simple as that. Soil is the second largest store of carbon after oceans in the world and it's been degraded at an ever increasing rate. And that's because we're demanding more from it. So we're increasing our yields, looking for more crops and getting rid of the, the wild areas on our soil. That actually leads to soil degradation and that releases carbon into the atmosphere. Plus, it's actually very difficult to get all the nutrients that we're going to need as humans from plants alone. In fact, if you want to get a complete protein, so that's a protein with all the amino acids that we need and can't make ourselves, we need a number of different plant sources to do that. And in fact, there's some uh, trace vitamins and minerals which we cannot get from plants alone. So we need to think of other things. On top of that, the future is also looking quite difficult. By 2050, the UN is predicting that we will need 70% more protein than we're currently producing. So that's 70% more protein than we're currently producing. So where is that going to come from? If we use traditional proteins, then we're going to contribute, continue to contribute to climate change and actually um, diminish wildlife further. That might sound insurmountable, but actually I do think there's something that we can all do. And that is to eat insects. <laughs> and more specifically, to eat crickets. Now I think crickets are gonna be the answer to many of our problems, so let me explain why. Insects are not a new food. Humans have been eating them for thousands of years. Look at the ancient Greeks, they ate insects. The Romans did as well. And in fact, if you go on holiday to Thailand even now, you'll often come across insects being sold in street food. Two billion people around the world actually consume insects as part of their everyday diet. So for them, it's nothing new. We have a long history of consuming insects as humans. Right now, commercial farms are being set up in Europe and North America to farm crickets for human consumption. This is quite different from catching crickets in the field because there's a real emphasis on high quality and hygienic conditions. And to suit Western taste, these crickets are then processed into cricket flour or cricket powder, something like this. And it can be added to almost any food. And people, the reason why people do that is because of its superfood qualities. Now, what makes them a superfood? Well, the Oxford English Dictionary defines superfoods, those foods that are nutrient rich and contribute to the health and well-being. And that's exactly what crickets do. They're right up there with 
goju berries, turmeric, kale even. And there's real sort of, I thought I'd kind of go through six key nutritional points about crickets to illustrate that. So the first one is protein. They're really high in protein. So they have 65 to 70% protein content, which makes them much higher than beef. Second, they're high in iron. Now, this, there's two types of iron, hem iron and non-hem iron. The non-hem iron is the stuff that you get from plants. The hem iron is the stuff you get from animals. And that's the stuff you want because it's easily absorbable. And that means crickets have hem iron. That's really good news because a quarter of the global population is anemic. So, well done, crickets. The third point is they're very high in vitamin B12. Vitamin B12, you can only source that from animal products. They actually have three times the content of vitamin B12 than beef. So, go crickets. Fourthly, they're high in antioxidant activity. Activity. Um, antioxidant activities prevent, delay and stop oxidization of different compounds within our body. So it's really important to help prevent and increase immunity against bugs. Um, and they have five times as much antioxidant activity as orange juice. Number five, the high in prebiotic fibers. Now that's completely different from probiotics. Prebiotics are the food, the good food for the good bugs in your gut. And that's really important because our modern lifestyle of consuming takeaways, high sugar food, high carb food, high fat food even, you know, is food for the bad bugs in our stomach and then can make our stomach go out of balance. And when that happens, it leads to discomfort, kind of make us very lethargic and give us headaches. Actually, it can also cause mental health issues. So keeping our micro gut biome in balance is really important. And because crickets are packed with um, prebiotic fibers, they can help in that department as well. And finally, so the sixth time, they're actually full of trace vitamins and minerals. Now that's really important because that helps us metabolize the nutrients that we're consuming. So they have plenty of zinc, copper, manganese, magnesium to help with that whole process. So when you listen to that, you're probably thinking, wow, I understand, that's great, that's a really good superfood. But what about the environment? Well, they actually have a really low carbon footprint, so they're good for the environment as well. So let me just kind of illustrate that. For every kg of cricket protein produced um, requires less energy, less input, less feed, less water than beef, chicken or salmon. So for example, a, a kg of cricket protein will only produce um, one gram of greenhouse grass, whereas a kg of beef protein will produce 3,000 grams of greenhouse gas. Just think what that's gonna be doing to our environment. So we've got less of everything there. So actually thinking about it, listening to all of that, you're probably thinking, actually, yeah, crickets sound like a really good superfood, but what do they taste like? They have a mild nutty taste. Um, it's definitely not unpleasant and smell slightly nutty as well, so they've got that nutty around there. They carry flavours really well, so you can add them to all sorts of foods. Um, and that's something that we need to do increasingly to actually make sure that we're able to feed the world's population. So next time you're walking down Nantwich High Street, thinking about the food that you should buy, please look for food that has crickets in, because they might be small, but they pack a really powerful nutritional punch and will be part of the big solution to solving climate change.